My name is uh, Stephen Mortillo, and uh, I served in the United States Army from November 13, 2002 to November 13, 2005. Um, and I was deployed to Iraq with the 1st Squadron, 4th United States Cavalry, under the 1st Infantry Division. Um, you know, there's a lot going through my head right now. There's a lot of stories that, that stick out in my mind. Uh, the best thing that I can do to illustrate to the people here uh, you know, the way things work in Iraq is, is tell you two separate stories at, at two different times. Um, the first one being when we first got there. Um, I'll backtrack a little, though. I went to, uh, I was deployed to Al-Daluya, Iraq. And uh, I got there around March 17th, uh, 2004. And I was, uh, I mean, most, most of the, the missions we were doing at that time was uh, what's called presence patrols where uh, we basically roll up and down the street uh, waiting for someone to shoot at us and looking for bad guys um, who are all dressed the same as, as uh, civilians. Um, one night we were, uh, we had just uh, SP'd the gate. We, we left, um, you know, we had been rolling down the road. I think a lot of people in my platoon had, had kind of a a bad feeling that night. Uh, I don't know, it's hard to describe. You, sometimes you just get feelings in uh, situations that things are, you're about to get attacked or things that are, you know, aren't gonna go as planned. And uh, we were rolling down the road and we received fire from an RPG and that RPG struck my vehicle, uh, which I was driving at the time. And uh, because of the angle it was shot at, uh, we couldn't depress the gun uh, on the Bradley enough to return fire. And that was, at that point in time, uh, this was about uh, April, like mid-April. Um, we hadn't really seen mu much, uh, you know, combat. Uh, up for that first month we were there, it was pretty much uh, fraternizing with the people um, around, you know, uh, talking to people in the streets you know, doing our patrol, setting up checkpoints. Um, but that night everything changed and uh, we were struck with an RPG and, you know, having no one to engage, we, uh, my section sergeant at the time, you know, fired two uh, warning shots into a wall. And that's the only return fire we gave. Um, you know, we, we started, you know, all that changed after we started taking casualties. Um, I can tell from a personal, like from personal experience that uh, you start losing people over there and it makes you angry. And uh, you can't determine who's your enemy and who's not. And uh, I mean, most of, most of the combat that happens there that I was a part of, um, you know, only lasts a few, a few seconds someone blows an IED and runs away. And uh, that could be anywhere in a 360 degree radius from you. And, um, you know, there's a type of fire in the military called suppressive fire. And uh, suppressive fire is um, basically uh, putting as much fire into a general area as possible in order to discourage your enemy from shooting at you. Um, You know, on several occasions, you know, ID goes off and you just pretty much pepper the whole area with suppressive fire because you have a few seconds to get the guy. And if you don't, he's going to come back and put more stuff in the road. You know, uh, we started taking casualties around August. Uh, it got pretty, it got pretty bad in my platoon. And um, I know personally, I started getting resentful. And uh, you know, my platoon was what's called weapons free on 25 millimeter. And I mean, you know, the longer you go in Iraq, uh, the more friends you take, the angrier you get, the more resentful you get at the people, the more frustrated you get that you can't find the, the person who just killed your friends. Um, I mean, you start, you start losing, uh, start losing focus, I guess, on the missions. Things don't, you know, it's not so much about the mission anymore. It's about, 
you know, doing what you have to do to make sure you don't have to stand in another formation and listen to Amazing Grace played in bagpipes one more time. You know, uh, there's, there was an understanding that we were going to do what it, what it took to, you know, bring everyone else home uh, after we were taking casualties. And then uh, on December 21st, uh, 2004, right before I left, about a month before, uh, I left that morning to go on a, a dismounted patrol. And uh, we were undermanned at that time. It was myself, one other uh, non-commissioned officer, a uh, platoon leader, and a medic. And we went on a dismounted patrol to secure um, a hostile area for the log pack that was coming in, uh, the morning log pack. And we, we were walking down uh, a small dirt path on the side of uh, the Tigris River. And uh, we came up on this, this, uh, this uh, you know, field, I guess you would call it. And, and there's, uh, we were kind of behind a whole row of houses. Like there was the road, and then there was uh, the houses. And then behind that, there was the, the fields and uh, you know, livestock and whatnot of the people who lived in the houses. And then there was a the river. And uh, we were engaged. As soon as we broke the, the threshold of the field, um, which was kind of lucky that they didn't let us walk in right into the middle of it, uh, my platoon leader was hit in the shoulder and wounded. And he and the two other individuals on the patrol um, ran into a, a, I guess, low ground. The road was a little elevated. And um, I jumped into a trash ditch on the side of the road. Uh, like right on the other side. And there was a, like a little barbed wire fence in front of me that had palm fronds uh, woven into it. And uh, at that point, I didn't know where the fire was coming from. I had a 203 and the radio. Um, I was having some difficulty, you know, firing back and talking at the same time. Uh, I gave up the contact report and then just proceeded to suppress the area with my 203 grenade launcher. Um, I looked over. And my platoon leader was firing back with his good arm. And uh, you know the other guys in my platoon were, were firing back with everything they had. And uh, there was this house that was directly in front of the field. And the first shot, I didn't hear. Uh, so I thought it may have come from inside of a building. And I started shooting grenades. Uh, at and into the building. I shot, I think, three grenades and uh, proceeded to keep firing. And then, um, you know, I, I shot a flare into the air to, to try to um, tell the Bradleys that were supporting us, you know, uh, where our position were, was.